The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Tony. Hey, guys. Tony. Happy What's weekend. up? Hey, good. How are you guys? Good, man. Good. How you doing? Good. I see your, your bicep veins are popping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. All right. That's a good sign. <laughs> I was listening and I was like, oh, shit. Um, yeah. Good. I don't even do uh, buys, man. That's the thing. I don't, I don't even do buys. I, well, I do pull-ups. I do pull-ups. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm basically a pull-ups and push-ups guy at this point. I don't really have have too much time to hang out, hang out in the yep. gym. And I, yep. I try I try to like do like a little short sprints every once in a while. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, you're, you're you're pretty fit, dude. How, how's your uh, how's your health these days? Oh, uh, it's good. You still, working uh, out? Yeah, yeah. I'm still like this was the first week because I had some long, long injuries that I've been dealing with. So this was the first week which I've been able to actually do push ups and pull ups. Like you what said, what kind of was, injuries you got? Oh, like long time deadlifting. Like it's just bar lifting. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like really yeah. bad. So, and I've been doing ice baths, uh, which helped a lot. So I go in like five minutes, and if you just feel so good, like zero soreness and mentally, like your dopamine goes up to hundred percent four to six hours after you do them. There's so so many benefits. So I highly recommend uh, ice baths to people. But I don't make make you uh, mentally resilient like Monero. Where where are you doing that? You're doing that at, at your own place, or you're like going to a place to do the ice baths? I used to buy the ice and do it in my ice bath, uh, in my uh, wow. ice tub. Uh, tub. Oh my god! But, uh, <laughs> which becomes an ice tub. <laughs> which becomes an ice tub. But so in Romania, it's cold, but not they can't stream water so cold because the, the pipes are gonna freeze. And in Florida, it's too warm. So I I go to my gym here. And it's pretty much like 40 Fahrenheit, almost to the freezing point. So it's really, really cold. Yeah, yeah. But you feel you feel amazing. I do the cold. That. I do the cold shower thing, or uh, I always end my shower with like as cold as it can get. Oh, um, yeah. oh it's cold yeah, in New York, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I would do the ice baths. I don't know, but they, they. I don't know. I think I. You do feel great. Like I love. I love jumping into just like the cold sea in the winter. I'll do that. Oh, like, awesome. You know, not on a regular basis, but like yeah. <laughs> once or twice uh, during the season. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to jump into frigid, frigid waters. Um, mm-hmm. There's nothing better. Oh my god! It's just yeah, exactly. Like, right. Yeah, but Especially it's different it's than like, an ice uh, than going in a shower. It's totally different. Like it's still yes. really, really cold, but if you get into an ice bath, which is almost to the point of freezing, just yeah, mentally that's wild. and uh, but it has so many benefits, like just mentally and physically. And again, like you can work out really hard, like this the world's strongest man. And then I'll end on my, my little rant on ice baths. But the world's strongest man, he does ice baths after every single training. Uh Bjornsson, if you know mm-hmm. him, and then he has zero soreness. And Larry Wheels and all these guys. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can it's... really start doing that. But I've also heard yeah. like conflicting things though too, right? Because it just like I don't know, it 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 boosts your adrenaline. Like it feels great. You like yep. you, that, that feeling is like really from kind of an adrenaline rush. Yep. Um, but is is it good to like give yourself those adrenaline rushes on a daily basis? I don't know. I could totally, um, I could totally get into the whole ice bath. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm always, I'm always down for the adrenaline rush. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess, uh, yeah. It's the, like they, uh, they compare like cocaine and you know stuff like that. Right, um, right. But it's more like it's not like a surge and then a, a huge drop, like a spike and a drop. It's more like a right. sustained. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Andrew Huberman did like two hours just on this alone, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, if you, if you can, I think I think you'd love it for sure. Just you, you just the... you get out and you just feel so clear mentally, and you feel like unstoppable. It's crazy. And the sa- sauna too, obviously, is a fantastic yeah. thing to try to incorporate in your life for you yep. know, especially cleansing yourself right of like the heavy metals and stuff. Um, that's kind of one of the ways you can do it. By, you know sweat sweating it out uh Especially i don't, I don't in, do it 
Yeah, and especially if you're in this fight with uh, Monero and for freedom, you gotta be strong physically, mentally. So <laughs> you, you do, do man. You do. <laughs> yeah. You got the. You, you need the eye of the tiger yeah. around here. It's the. Yeah. This is the battle of the freaking century, man. For sure, it's the we, we are up battle. against some some very strong, powerful, dark forces. Yeah. <laughs> do not want Monero to succeed I I mean I uh, I am pretty uh I'm pretty convinced of that um for but they sure. also I don't know some of them maybe do want it kind of to succeed because they'll they, they they need something they can use too to do their their sketchy stuff uh we got another tip here BRJ tipped 50 cents Heidi and Tobia crypto tips are constantly giving shout outs to XMR with 224,000 followers they might be good people didn't yeah for sure I like message with them on twitter recently i said come on the show they were when they were talking about monero they're like yeah but then we, and i don't know it never happened um hmm. but yeah it would be better if i went on their show right like <laughs> them coming on my show won't really help monero if i go on their show or you know one of us goes on to their show that would be a big help because now we're talking to their two hundred twenty four thousand followers so yep. yeah we'll try to try to make that happen good point it's a huge following um but yeah let's let's get into the the new section so let me share my my screen okay and uh talks are done okay perfect um okay and before we start guys like and share this helps a lot obviously and then i'm watching the youtube comments as well um so if you have any questions if you want to add even a link that you guys want us to go through right now, or if you have any questions about what we're going through right now, then you can go ahead and uh, write that in, in the YouTube chat. I'm watching that one. Specifically, now, um, over quick conference, have you bought your tickets? Use a code 2024. Uh, Tux24. I, I tried body, I forgot body's code. Uh, I don't think it's body24. Body, no, write your code. it should be. Should be? Is that body twenty one? Okay. I, I tried. Hmm. Body twenty. Yeah, uh, but body has a code, so body. If you can write it down for people, uh, there's Vlad twenty four <laughs> one dash eight hundred dash Monerotopia. I think uh, <laughs> that's a lot of codes. So use all of them and just just use twenty twenty Tony twenty four. Yeah, or just use that one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So. Let's talk about the first thing for this week. Uh, Japanese authorities arrested a gang of 18 scammers by analyzing Monero transactions. Um, now, let's actually go into the article itself from Cointelegraph. So the group of scammers had been under investigation since August by Japan's new cybercrime unit. And essentially, what we're going to discover by going through this is that... Actually, they, they didn't mention it, but usually what happens is that it's not that they cracked Monero and they discover the malicious things that done, they've done with it. It's usually pure OPSEC, like just the people probably using Monero, putting it back on some centralized exchange, which is tied to their credit card or their card. And there we go. And the money goes into their account, which is identified to, to them. Or probably some, some stupid way like this in which they, they messed up. But here's a graph. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can, you can see it. But... Um, just shows um, quarter free statistics and, and graphs on uh, security incidents by chain. Uh, you see Ethereum, Bitcoin, BSC, Cosmos, or Monero. I don't see Monero. That's that's quite odd. Well, yeah, that's because you can't you can't track it. So uh, it's a really short article on this. But um, what I can also mention is that uh, the transaction total about. 100 million yen, which is $670,000. So did it actually, and people on the subreddit on the post mentioned this too. Um, whenever some criminals are apprehended they, and they use Monero this way or another, the news must always be phrased in a way that it makes Monero seem easily traceable by authorities. While the truth is always that it's not Monero which failed, but the back OPSEC practiced by these criminals. So if you ever hear stuff like this, doesn't mean that they cracked Monero. It just means that the criminal is just just did some bad OPSEC because of I don't know. Uh, they're not. They're just not. Uh, they just didn't care. I don't know. Um, 
now let's move on. Let's talk about <laughs> Sailor. So um, pretty much if you're a paranoid, you're a paranoid crypto anarchist, if you hold your own keys and don't trust the government, that's what he said in, in this interview. So um, let's, let's watch it. But according to Sailor, just trust your government. You don't need to hold your own keys. Just use some centralized exchange or use, use some bank to hold your Bitcoin and uh, you're, you're going to be fine. And she made, she made some good points about what happened to gold uh, in the 20th century. Um, uh, so let's just watch this video and then we'll comment a bit more. If there is more Bitcoin, Bitcoins held with these third party custodians, what risk does that pose having greater supply held by fewer large institutions? Does that increase the risk of seizure and confiscation like we've seen with gold? And is that not exactly what Bitcoiners don't want to happen? No, I think it's the opposite. I think that when the Bitcoin is held by uh, a bunch of crypto anarchists who aren't regulated entities, who don't acknowledge government or don't acknowledge taxes or don't acknowledge reporting requirements, that increases the risk of seizure. You have an OG crypto community that's very hardcore about it, but if you look at where all the money is, 99.9% .9 of the money is actually in the traditional economy. If you consider the Great Depression, I mean, people thought that their gold was safe in banks until the executive order of 1933. So we're not entirely safe. I mean, I know that's kind of a wild thing to suggest may happen again, but history does repeat itself. So yeah. people's Bitcoin wouldn't be entirely safe. It's people say system. that, but mostly it's, mostly it's paranoid crypto anarchists that say that, okay? Because it's, it's, a, it's a myth and a trope that goes on over and over again. But first of all, he didn't really seize the gold. People voluntarily turned in the gold. They didn't go and kick in everybody's door, arrest them, shoot them, and take their gold. That never happened. Is the United States on the Bitcoin standard? Maybe course, we will be soon. <laughs> but, the point, but the point really is we're not. right? It's totally not a, a reasonable comparison. You know, people have these inflammatory you know, tropes or inflammatory memes that they, they use. And it's like, I say that because I want you to give me your money. Okay. Like I want, if, if you don't trust the bank, then you'll buy my hardware wallet. If you don't trust this government, you'll move to my country and you'll buy a passport from me. That's the kind of fear mongering to get you to give me your money. Right. And I use it to sell you a gun, to sell you a hardware wallet to sell you an account to sell you a financial advisor to sell you an insurance or to sell you bitcoin because what <laughs> god what he's doing this with all this charlatan holy shit or this guy's a like a, a, a status status operative i mean the, the the yeah the most like an oh my god i know people's blood boil when they hear this like yeah. the the most annoying part about this is that he's like Tuck said, he is clearly the charlatan, and here he is essentially trying to call the, the crypto anarchists the charlatans, right? He's saying like, oh, they're they're just sending the, spreading these memes out. They're fear mongering because they want you to use their hardware wallet. They want you to store your key. Like that's the scam. The scammers are the people that are are trying to get you to use crypto correctly and hold your own keys. That are trying to scare you into to using crypto peer to peer. Those are the scammers, not Michael Saylor, the billionaire who has just like, just like, he's basically a snake's oil salesman. He's been from, from day one. I mean, it, yeah, there's like no reason to believe he's not a, like a fed op or just like a big right. bankster, you know, it's, but the, he's not, now he's not like, now he's sitting here and like attacking the, the, the tides turn attitude. so much like over, over the course of the, the sale, the sailorism of Bitcoin. It's like yeah. at <laughs> first it started out as like, he was kind of like, yeah, Bitcoin's going to become a new standard. I'm going to use it. And then it turned into, oh, Bitcoin just has a store of value. And now it's like, well, Bitcoin, ah, do you really need to hold your own Bitcoin? Ah, you know, you're paranoid yeah. if you're going to hold your own Bitcoin. It's like, that's crazy. insane insane i'll sell you i'll sell you something cake wallet it's free Down <laughs> yeah exactly you yeah keys he, your he coins would, baby he would call you a scammer you're, you're okay. trying to scare people out of using the traditional I'm trying banking to scam system people by using something for free yeah that's right <laughs> but who's the, who's the bigger scammer actually because so he's okay like say people are actually money on the wallets and stuff like that but he's making a lot more money 
by having billions of dollars invested in Bitcoin and getting the large institutions to hold a large amount of it, right. which drives the price up, which drives its own Bitcoin price up. So, and she made some very good points. So, yeah, it, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's this sailorism, like Tuck said, it's crazy. Uh, YouTube comments, Mr. 1024, why it's a sailor is anti Second Amendment, he's anti freedom. Uh, paper vigilante, big joke. That's all of it. Puts on MSTR. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure. Body would 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 like to say a comment or two. Maybe when he comes up and does his price report, if he wants yep. to uh, comment on, yep. on all this. <laughs> if this doesn't tell you that Bitcoin was hijacked, I don't know what was. The fact that this guy is like the 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 big the big Bitcoin person that everyone knows about. Yep. It's amazing though, like there's all these people that are you know trapped in in it though, right? And they are they'll just continue to go along with it because the you know this has been the prediction from day one when we started to see this narrative that the number go up uh, narrative, and so even if people are sitting there and they're like, uh, you know, he's 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 kind of wrong, you know, I should be holding my own, they'll just go along with it because they want to see the price of Bitcoin go up. So yep. it, you know, they're like, yeah, go sailor. Destroy Bitcoin. Yep. They want to maintain as as followers. As as Bitcoin goes up in fiat value where I'm winning. Yep. Let's do a massive <laughs> protest outside of the Bitcoin 2025 Las Vegas convention. Anti-sailor <laughs> protest. Pro what is this? Uh, this is the Bitcoin conference. It's in it's in May next year. Oh, okay. It's in Las Vegas. He's saying to go protest like outside anti sailor. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have to do the Monerotopia down the block like we did in Miami. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um moving on. So movie featuring that's cool. Uh movie featuring Monero playing in the San Francisco Bay area this Sunday. So um if you're close, go. Uh but also if you come down to Mexico City on November 14th to a conference. They're going to have their Mexican yes. premiere. Yeah, we'll so. be playing it in a theater across the street from the venue. Super cool on Thursday evening. That's badass. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, when I saw this, I, I thought it was AI generated. I thought it was fake. I saw it just when I woke up. And <laughs> um, But Joe Rogan actually got an interview, a podcast with uh, Donald Trump. It's almost three hours. So I was excited when Elon Musk came came on. I think he was only on for an hour, an hour and a half, maybe more, whatever. But this one is long. And with Donald Trump, I've only listened to about 30 minutes of it so far, but I'm sure it's packed of stuff. The, the first talk. Yeah. If, first day. if you could go to like the 41 minute mark, um, you know, this is kind of kind of a little slightly relevant where he talks about Rogan asked him about like eliminating uh, income tax. So I think this is. Is it going? Oh yeah, yep. Go ahead and play that. Like, is that forty-one minute? Uh, I'm not. Sure. I've seen that mini uh, clip. Yeah, know, it's like around clip. the forty-one minute mark, I think. Cool word. I've said this for the last couple of weeks. In the dictionary today, and any is the word tariff. It's more beautiful than love. It's more beautiful than it. <laughs> it's the most beautiful word. This mm -hmm. country can become rich with the use, the proper use of tariffs it'll did keep you just companies. float out the idea of getting rid of income taxes and replacing it with tariffs well okay were you serious about that our, yeah sure but why not because we ready our country was the richest in the eight relatively in the 1880s and 1890s a president who was assassinated named mckinley he was the tariff king he spoke beautifully of tariffs his, his language was really beautiful uh, we will not allow the enemy to come in and take our jobs and take our factories and take our workers and take our families unless they pay a big price and the big price is tariffs. And he'd speak like that, but he was right. And then around in the early 1900s, they switched over stupidly to frankly an income tax. And you know why? Because countries were putting a lot of pressure in America. We don't want to pay tariffs. Please don't you, you know, they believe me, they control our politicians if you look at the kind of numbers that these guys make then and now, but we had a commission meeting in the uh, eight, I think it was 1887. Think of this problem. 
we were so rich. We had so much money. We didn't know what to do. So they set up a blue ribbon commission on tariffs. And the sole purpose is what to do with all the money we had. We were so rich because we were taxing other people for coming in and taking our jobs. And China does it. That's what China did. If you want to open a factory and sell cars, if you build a factory here or have a factory, they don't take our cars. They, don't, they wouldn't take our cars. But if you build a plant in China, you can do that. Elon did that. By the way, Elon is great. That guy is such a great guy. I think you're a fan of I love Elon. Him. I'm not sure if I should keep playing <laughs> He but just yeah. goes on and on. Yeah. Um, pretty pretty cool though, right? That he's doing Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see if we get Kamala on there. No, no way. That'd be crazy. She can't, she can't sustain that. I think she already declined. No, she, she already declined. I but uh, you know, we, we got we got Trump talking about eliminating income tax. It's <laughs> fucking awesome. That's crazy. I'll, I'll take um, that. Flirting, slightly flirting, not official rhetoric, slightly flirting yeah, with the idea. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's of course, it's of nice course. to think about. I don't know if it'll actually end up ever happening, but it's nice to think about. And he, the well, thing me, is that people the... still don't like tariffs, right? But like from a crypto right. anarchist standpoint, tariffs is not free market. But yeah. but tariffs over income tax gives you way more control over your money. Way more right. control of your money because you can just choose right. not to buy certain products. You can choose not to spend your money. Income tax right. is forcibly taken out of your paycheck every month. Exactly. So there you go. Tux for president, one hundred percent. No. And uh, you know, meanwhile, you know, Trump is flirting with eliminating income tax, and Kamala is flirting with un implementing unrealized capital gains. So it's like. Yeah, yeah, that's still know, a major. It's a pretty, yeah. pretty big. Is either one going to happen? Probably not. You know, if is Kamal, I, I, I doubt they. Uh, you never know. They might start. They might start with something small with the unrealized capital gains. I mean, that's that's like what I mean, we technically tax, right? already have that. I would argue we already have unrealized gains tax, which is property tax. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I like that 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 argument. So yeah, um, that that it. I I was listening to the Trump thing. Like the first like. 20 minutes or 30 minutes i said i felt like rogan was just like bro come on man because like <laughs> trump just kind of like he asked him like you know what was it like winning yep. the presidency and trump for just like a half hour talked about like the lincoln's bedroom and, then like, <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah. like not really saying much about it but somehow talking about it for a half hour and like Joe Rogan's like, but but what was like being president like? He's like, yeah, but you know, I just wanted to let you know that it was surreal when I, in being there. And like, like he went back and talking about it again. It was like, you know, Trump's got this way about him to just really he's he's really good at filibustering, right? He'll just <laughs> he'll just kind of blah blah blah. blah. And then sometimes it. you get these moments where he just says some some really base things, but uh, a lot of it's kind of just you know. Not not heavy, not heavy words. Just calling things beautiful and great and wonderful, <laughs> right? Tariff is a love uh, language, guys. Yeah, it's the most beautiful word. Like what? Like okay. <laughs> <laughs> it may be, but what's not is uh, Camilla comparing <laughs> Trump to Adolf Hitler. <laughs> oh my God, they are they are relentlessly now going. I mean. Their rhetoric is much more concerning to me than Trump's, right? Like, the you know, like the fact that they're out here, like calling this guy a Nazi, comparing him to Hitler. You have uh, Hillary Clinton comparing him now to Hitler because he wants because they're throwing a rally at Madison Square Garden. And in like the 1930s, there was a, a like a pro Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden. So now they're equating the Trump rally at Madison Square Garden with the Nazi rally that happened in the 30s? Like, why? So, like, it's Madison Square Garden. Like, so if Kamala Harris had a event there, would she also be a Nazi? Like, I don't get it. So wh why is this venue all of a sudden Nazi venue? It's freaking New York City, Madison Square Garden. He's having a rally there. I don't know why it's being equated with being a, you know, a Nazi, a Nazi gathering because one happened there historically, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. And they're out there and this is like what they're, what they're telling their, their people and riling them up and trying to, uh, you know, fear monger 
and label this guy as a Nazi and how he's going to, you know, and, and the, you know, the, the, the world will never be the same if Trump wins and he's going to turn the military against the people. I mean, you know, I, I got I got my issues with Trump. But let's let's be real here. The guy was already president. Right. So mm. we, we see what he does. Um, you could you know, he's he's got flaws. But to equate him with Hitler and to use that fear monger against you know people who aren't really paying attention otherwise is really irresponsible. Like that's really irresponsible leadership to be out there labeling yeah, the the candidate that you're running against as Adolf Hitler, basically calling him like no, enemy number one, right? Like we, we can't let him win at all costs, at like at any cost, right? Like you, you know, even if that means you know having to assassinate the guys, essentially is is what they're saying without saying it. I think I know what happened. Um... It was her birthday, and she probably wanted Minecraft. But instead of <laughs> Minecraft, she received the Mein Kampf, which may sound similar. <laughs> and so, um, you know, she read about Hitler a little bit, and she's like, "Wow, he was a bad guy. Uh, he killed a lot of Jews." But Donald Trump didn't do anything. He didn't even start a war. But yeah, he's a bad guy. Why not? So let's go on TV and let's <laughs> let's equate him to Hitler. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah. I'm tempted to go over to Madison Square Garden. I think it's tomorrow. I'm tempted to go over there. And like interview people with the Monero Monero talk microphone, and be like, "Are, are you a Nazi?" <laughs> you know, as I as I ask, like, you know, the old lady or the Jewish guy who's attending the Madison Square Garden event, like, "Are you a Nazi, sir?" Because according to Hillary Clinton, this is a Nazi gathering. God, I mean, God. it's it's so insulting to all the people that are attending it. Like, it it's it's really it's really low IQ on the uh, from their from their perspective because they're I mean they're just turning all these people again. Like, there's no way, you know, it's like when they called them the deplorables, right? It's it's similar mm. to to that moment, uh, well, basically calling anybody who supports Trump a Nazi. It's so low IQ that so actually I'll share this poll and then we'll go into. Uh, a video from an Auschwitz survivor on what Kamala just said. So uh, Kim.com ran a poll. Harris says Trump is like Adolf Hitler. Who would you vote for? <laughs> Adolf Hitler or Kamala? Mm -hmm. 89% <laughs> voted for Adolf Hitler. <laughs> of course, you know, Adolf Hitler being actually Trump, not the actual Hitler. But um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. On Twitter these days, on Twitter these days, I don't know. Adolf Hitler might win. Or he could, uh, he, he could win. I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some crazy stuff out there. We, we had a, we have another super chat here. Definitely not Richard Stallman tipped 16 cents. Protect the state apparatus. Don't buy Monero. Hmm. Uh, that is very, very Stallman of you. And yeah. another one over here. XMR cash tip 25 cents. When politician uh, are campaigning, when politicians are campaigning, you can depend depend on politicians to keep all their bad promises and forget all their good promises. Horton's law. This is true. This is true. It is true. Now, let's go ahead and watch this video. So this comes from an Auschwitz survivor, Jerry uh, Barsky. He said, I know more about Hitler than Kamala will ever know in a thousand lifetimes. For her to accuse President Trump of being like Hitler is the worst thing I've ever heard in my 75 years of living in the United States. My name is Jerry Wartsky. I'm 94 years old and survivor of Auschwitz and the Dead Marches. Adolf Hitler invaded Poland when I was nine years old. He murdered my parents and most of our family. I know more about Hitler than Kamala will ever know in a thousand lifetimes. For her to accuse President Trump of being like Hitler is the worst thing I've ever heard in my 75 years, years living in the United States. I know President Trump and he would never say this and Kamala Harris knows it is. She owns my parents and everybody else who was murdered by Hitler in apology for repeating this lie. Why should the Jewish people support the president? Hmm. Because he's a mensch. I believe that President Trump is definitely going to be good for Israel because in 
everything that is done up to now was in favor. He never double crossed anyone and he never showed any weakness. Watching President Trump pray for the hostages at the OHL and getting spend time with him so meaningful. He has always stood with the Jewish people and the state of Israel. So he could have just said because they owed him, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. Tr- Trump. Trump is like as pro-Israel as you can get. So it's funny no. seeing that, like basically both like the the people on the left, so like Kamala, Tim Walls versus Trump, and you know uh, JD Vance, yeah. like them debating. You see how like they're basically battling to see who loves Israel more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comp- letter it changes when it gets closer to election time. Who loves Israel more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love Israel more. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a little, it's a little, a little odd. I mean, last time I checked, Israel is a, a country separate from the United States. Um, Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I don't know. Not not gonna not gonna go there. But uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know what to think anymore. But I'm voting for Trump. That's for sure. The, yeah. the left, the, the left terrifies me. As we all know, it's Coke, Pepsi, right? Either either way. I mean, with Trump, we'll, we'll we'll get they'll slip something in else under Trump. You know, the ne- the next Patriot Act or something uh, will happen under the the Trump regime. But uh, there's there's no way any anybody any like pro liberty person can be voting for uh, voting democratically right now. I mean they're mm-hmm. they they they're just off the freaking wall. I, mean, I already decided I wasn't gonna vote, but I might go anyway because usually they lump local stuff like county clerk whatever in there. Um, mm-hmm. But if I do, I'll probably write in like Thomas Massey. All right, all right, that's cool. He would be he would be amazing, right? Which Maybe he actually just endorsed Trump, uh, interestingly enough. Not sure if that's a good yeah, thing, but <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, what is he gonna you know, he's got a Yeah, it's not like he's he's, he's a politician at the end of the day. He is a congressman, you know, he's not he's gotta support one or the other. I mean, you uh, see these people that have come out to support Trump too, right? I mean, you got Elon Musk out there, freaking doing rallies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Elon Musk has a uh, he's he has over like a hundred million dollars in his uh, America Super PAC. <laughs> yeah, he is so, like, really. The, it's very different from I think last election cycle. There's a lot more money and there's a lot more big people who are on Trump's side this time around. I think. Hmm. I see the Elon Musk thing though. It just is a great business decision too. Like he's already he's already got every every left wing person you know lining up to buy a Tesla. Um, now that he's out there pro Trump, you know J- Joe the plumber who drives a Ford, the gas guzzling <laughs> Ford, now may oh, may go out and trip. buy a, yeah may <laughs> go out and buy a Tesla. You know you might do it now. You don't you won't feel like. Uh, you won't be embarrassed pulling up, pulling up at the bar in his Tesla, right? Nobody's going to be making fun of him if he goes out and buys one. Now it's like it's going to be you'll have people on the right buy. Like he already had the market on the left. He already owned that. Everybody that you know is on the left that want they like the Tesla is the thing to get. What he didn't have was anybody on the right, right? Because that of like they they were they didn't want to be associated with, uh, you know. Whatever. That's a funny way to look at it. On the on the political compass, he's really just a libertarian right, and uh, he's just playing both sides. <laughs> it really opens up his market, right? If he it's sat right. down and thought, like, hmm, how do I grow my sales? I need to get the other, you know, fifty percent of the people that live in this nation to be willing to buy a Tesla. <laughs> so smart, smart move on 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 his behalf. Yep. Uh, talking about the uh, Democrats. Some chose to lean towards uh, the Republican side, just like uh, Robert F. Kennedy. So uh, I think in the same speech that that 
Kamala did on Trump and associating him with with uh, Hitler. She talked about Trump using the military for his own uh, benefits or his own person, <laughs> which is which is quite an outrageous thing thing to say. So uh, let's watch uh, what um, Robert F. Kennedy has to say in regards to what she said. Say one other thing. President Harris said today in her post, in her speech, he said that President Trump was going to turn the U.S. military against the American public and use the public to promote its agenda. How many of you think that is true? Well, what's interesting to me is that the Biden-Harris administration has done something two weeks ago that has never been done in American history, which is to send exactly lethal force, to send a directive to the Pentagon, changing the law to make it legal for the U.S. military to be used to use lethal force against American citizens on American soil. <laughs> Technically, now it's legal for the U.S. military under this directive. It will become legal for the U.S. military to shoot and kill Americans who engage in political protests because they disagree with policies in the White House. I'm not making this up. Any of you can look it up. This is a democratic initiative. This did not come during the Trump administration. This did not come from Donald Trump. It came from the Democratic Party. And that's why I left the Democratic Party. There we go. So we just said it. And I think last, last week we discussed about this directive in which they can now apply lethal force on the citizen and when else did it happen? Well, during uh, during communism, slowly they infiltrated commies, and then they started to impose their law, physically, lethally, imprison people. And uh, we're seeing that in the UK. If you like something that is against the government or do something against the government, then you go to jail. That happened. Uh, and there. They didn't talk about this on the news, of course. This will be a major headline, but of course they don't talk about this. <laughs> Sli slipped under the radar. Yeah. So they're they're, they're calling Trump a theoretical hit next Hitler. Meanwhile, yeah. this what's actually happening in real time uh, is they're you know preparing to turn the military against its own people. <laughs> Which but, is... but, but, but Trump might be act like Hitler if he gets gets elected. Yeah, which is this is soft communism. Wow. It's just under radar, nobody knows, changing little stuff, little mm -hmm. sentences, slowly going into constant martial law. Yeah, but he's a bad guy. And um, <laughs> this post is funny. Somebody said, if Kamala wins, <laughs> how many Haitians will invade America? And the Wall Street Silver said, all of them. <laughs> God, it's funny, not funny, of course. Um, but so we talked about the US now. Let's shift towards the other side of the world, Europe. Um, so I, I actually, I'm not sure if this is an article or not, but uh, essentially it's a picture of uh, what could be maybe some um, men from Africa in Germany in probably what is Oktoberfest. And the title says, The New Germans, time to redefine what it means to be Deutsch. And to which Nem responded, Nem, which is to be a speaker at the Manaratopia uh, conference. She went to the first one. Uh, she's been a guest. So uh, please go ahead and follow her on X. She has a lot of uh, good stuff. Uh, she said, fuck no, the biggest fat is no. Oppose this replacement agenda with every ounce of your being. Our kids' future depend on it. Um, but now, so, okay, let's take Camilla's association of Trump to Hitler. Now, let's take the fact that they're changing the law to implement a constant martial law so they can use the military against the people lethally, which what which is what the communists did. Uh, what did they also do? Well, they also believed in, well, essentially um, Hitler believed in the Aryan race. I mean, 
um, you know, communist countries like Romania, they were also pushing the Jews away. So they all marginalized somebody. And it's interesting what's happening today. It's kind of, I, I guess it's kind of like in reverse where you take the actual population of, of um, uh, say, Europe, right, right? Like predominantly white, and you're trying to replace it with another one with like from Africa because they tend to be less educated, don't have access to good education. And uh, probably they just want to replace the whites with the Africans so that they can get all their votes and just be able to rule very easily. That's my hypothesis. And it, it's not being racist, of course, please. Uh, but it's just being like, I, I think that's essentially what's happening and why they're, why they're doing it. And they also want to confuse you with... Uh, your own gender, like who you are as a person too. Taking this case, and we talked about trans in the past, I'm not gonna get into it uh, too much, but like this case of this kid appearing on National, um, let's see, yeah, National Geographic, the gender revolution. Um, when you're a kid, you're all sorts of stuff. I mean, uh, if you're a boy, you might play with dolls sometimes, whatever, cars, then you're a ninja, you're a, uh, I don't know, you're, you're a bird. When I was five, I tried to jump off chairs and pretend I was a bird. That was a lot of stuff. But guess what? When I got older, uh, these things kind of faded away because kids are not that... Their prefrontal cortex is not... We, had, really we cool. had here in uh, in New York City, in one of the New York City public schools, this is... Uh, my, my daughter goes... I, I could tell you endless, endless, endless stories of things I hear. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. But there was a crazy one the other day uh, one of her friends at a different New York City public school, uh, it was uh, a young boy, he's like 10 years old. In his class, he was forced to partner and dance with a male, uh, like a young male black. He's he's white. He was forced <laughs> to, to partner and dance with a young male black, a young black male for a, like they were doing this dance event and they wanted to, uh, you know, mix mix everybody up. And so they wanted people to get, you know, and they told the parents, well, we want them to get used to, they, they shouldn't feel like ashamed, like boys shouldn't feel ashamed dancing with other boys or that, like, like what the, oh my God, like, I don't know. And, and forcing that upon kids, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That, that, that's a little, little crazy. And it, was, it wasn't like, it was just some like activity they were doing. It was like playing sports and like, let's get the, you know, different people it was dancing right so we want we want boys dancing with other boys in new york city public school like that's crazy of course, like that's that's just bizarre that's just bizarre to me um and it's you know it's, it's very apparent that there's some kind of agenda going on there where yeah they're they're trying to confuse young kids uh, you know people might hear that and be like eh, it sounds innocent enough when you collectively hear all these little things that they do and how they include it into the curriculum, um, it adds up. And the you know, it seems to be that there's a real agenda there of like like you're saying, just essentially trying to trying to confuse young kids mm -hmm. um, about their their own identity. Yeah, transing a kid is is just straight up child abuse, full stop, and should be yeah. punished fully to the extent possible. Yep. Yeah. It should be. That's all I'm going to uh, say about that. Yeah. So let's take a little bit of a break. Um, a bit to me, this is the listing Monero. Um, Binance took it off a bunch of other places. Does it affect us? Nope. Because we, we were not meant to be on these exchanges anyway. So whatever. Moving on. <laughs> Just a quick mention. Mm. Um, okay. Now let's go yeah, back. Yeah, no to... one uses it, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, never heard of that exchange, right? Like, yeah, same actually. But are, are we running out exchanges to delist from yet? I mean, how many? How many more do we got? Oh, we're, we're getting there, closer every every day. It's getting closer. John Doe said XMR token. Lol. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about the US. We talked about Europe. Let's talk about uh, BRICS. So they just had, um, I think, a huge meeting um and i think as of before this meeting uh, maybe i could be wrong but um in BRICS used to be uh brazil china russia india 
uh, United Arab Emirates. And now uh, 13 more countries formally received partner status. Turkey, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Algeria, Belarus, Bolivia, Cuba, Indonesia, Malaysia, Nigeria, Thailand, Uganda, Vietnam. And moving on to this article, 159 out of 193 countries have signed up to use the new BRICS settlement system. What does it mean? The US and European Union will no longer be able to use economic sanctions as a weapon. Uh, the system allows countries to settle trades and payments in their own currencies, uh, losing reliance on the US dollar, which, of course, is something that, that they need to do because of what things that Europe and US are doing. And um, yeah, it's, you also have to count that BRICS is representing 5 billion people and we're like seven to eight. So that's more than half of the human population. It's quite, it's quite huge. I've also seen uh, circulating, which I didn't include in the news. I, I'm not sure if it's totally true. The BRICS currency. Did it have like a piece of paper representing like a BRICS uh, cash, a physical cash? I, I don't, I'm not sure. I've heard opposing views. I'm not sure if that's actually like, I don't think that's what they actually want to do to have like the BRICS cash. Uh, I think they probably just want to trade in between yeah, using their own currencies, but that's what you have to do. I mean, um, Europe is doing what they're doing, trying to, uh, I mean, essentially, of course, the war was not easy for Putin and I'm not endorsing him, but essentially, and he talked about it in, in during this conference is that I think he signed an agreement with NATO saying, stop, like if you keep pushing NATO into the East, there's gonna be a problem. Besides, you know, them wanting Crimea back and stuff like that, but they kept pushing uh, NATO into the Ukraine, you know, close to the, close to Russia, and uh, they wouldn't take. It, it. So I, I'm not endorsing Putin; he's not great. But this is also not great. The U.S. and Europe, they all want something, and he, he had to prove himself in the world. So he, you know, him and China, North Korea, they all partnered together. But it's very scary because they all have more toys to play with and they're very powerful toys and Einstein was talking about war or three and war or four but no, war or four is going to be fought with sticks but <laughs> I think it's gonna it's we're not even gonna get there and um, we talked about so we talked about communism and th this is just enforcing it what they're trying to do uh, something called pre-bunking uh, from Ursula von der Leyen which it's essentially, you don't have to debunk uh, inf information. So it's already out there and you're trying to debunk it. That's not true. No. During communism, what they've done is that they made it in such a way is that you don't even know what's true because they're changing history, actually, like legit changing history so that you don't even know what's what's true. So coming to so a public school, public school system near you. Yeah, <laughs> from the president of the EU, man, this isn't crazy. Yeah, play this, play this. This is just like, this is dystopia. Like we're we're already like halfway through the novel now. We're like we're we're yeah. in it. This is insane. Play this. Yeah, we're we're past 1984. First yeah. chapter. <laughs> Go ahead. Can you make it louder? Uh, grab it, Alex. <laughs> I, I don't think I can. I'm sorry. Is it? Can you hear a little bit, or is it? Yeah, you can hear. I don't know why it's so low though. Your other videos were okay. It's actually kind of low on my end too. I think it's just the video is very low. At least there's captions. All right. Is much more successful than debunking. Pre-bunking is basically the opposite of debunking. In short, prevention is preferable to cure. Perhaps if you think of information manipulation as a virus, instead of treating an infection once it has taken hold, that is debunking. It is much better to vaccinate so that the body is inoculated. Pre-bunking is the same approach. Because disinformation relies on people passing it on to others. 
it is essential that people know what malign information influence is and what the techniques are that are behind it. And as the knowledge goes up, our chances of being influenced goes down. And that builds up a society with resilience that we will need. Beautiful speech. It reminds me of the 20th century. Uh, I think Stalin, Hitler, Mussolini, and many others gave a similar one. What the hell is this? <laughs> it's it's pre-programming. They want to program society so that they think in a certain way and that they're not susceptible to learning information that they disagree with, what they label as misinformation. It's That's crazy that they're out there publicly uh, espousing these things, saying, like, this is the direction we're moving in as, as a government. We are going to start pre-programming our citizens so that they're not susceptible to what we consider, what we label as misinformation. Um, so uh, you're all on board with that, guys? Well, it doesn't matter because we're fucking doing it anyway. <laughs> and we're telling you about it. And we're making it sound like it's a good thing. Yeah. It's insane. This is the freaking, it's that, that is, that is terrifying. Terrifying. Well, notice the analogy of vaccination. Yes. Well, while so. using a, a, a pro vaccination analogy. <laughs> and essentially saying that free speech is a virus. Right. <laughs> this is communism. We need to vaccinate our minds so they're not yeah. susceptible to certain ideas. Certain yeah, ideas. We need Ursula chip in our head. Right. <laughs> um okay let's go a little bit in back into uh monero i see on youtube <laughs> i think it's a droid this woman is and has always been a right wing uh, desperate propaganda yeah crazy um, vaccinate minds against against using monero yep uh malicious node ip is discovered you so um as you may or may not know, you do have to be careful. Uh, Monero devs hunted down hundreds of malicious node IPs this week and and made a list of them available at this link right here. You have the links available, so you can go ahead and click on it and look into it uh, yourself. Uh, these malicious nodes could potentially reveal the IP address of the Monero node from which originated the user transaction. Some of the IPs have been linked to the linking line infrastructure. They're all presumably from chain analysis, even though <laughs> nothing is confirmed <laughs> at this point. Um, yeah, so wanted to touch on that over it quick. Then let's talk about this. Uh, this is fresh. It's being reported that British police are now blocking people from joining the massive freedom protest in London. Tens of thousands of people are already there. So. Uh, yes, there is a massive protest in, in Britain uh, for freedom. Um, so I, I've read a couple articles, and I don't know what's what's true, what's not. It's hard, but essentially this guy, Tommy, I think he organized this. He was against some anti-immigration stuff. Don't quote me on it. I don't know. But to jail him, and people kept going. But I, I tried to get some good information on this. Um, but yeah, people people are protesting. It's so hard to get information. It's, I just go on X, to be honest, on or, or try to read the news, and then I try to think the opposite. That works too. Including to vid people, blind people can read captions. Uh, yeah, we have all the links available. Uh, shortwave. Um, this over quick. Like I said, um, thirty five countries representing five billion. Only China and. India, they have billions of people, like three combined. So huge. Bricks is huge. And last thing, guys, for today, quickly, uh, Tucker Carlson interview. And at the one hour and 58 mark, Monero has been referenced uh, in response to Tucker's deep concern about the lack of privacy in the cryptocurrency system. So let's go to 158 maybe a little little before that but go ahead, go ahead. yeah i think they've gotten sort of the u.s government now so binance survived where it was one of the biggest crypto exchanges yeah. but now they're under u.s government surveillance 
So I think Binance is essentially just an extension, a crypto extension of, of the U.S. government at this point. So can I just ask, as someone who believes in freedom, whose freedom is about to be taken from him, the one of the, to me, the most intriguing promise, most thrilling promise of cryptocurrency was the ability to t- transact, you, you know, any, any kind of economic trans, financial transaction in with privacy. It's like nobody's business, actually. Yeah, it's not. It turns out it's not that private, though. In a lot of ways, it's, it's not private. In a lot of ways, it's more. So, who the account holder is is private until it's somehow made public. But the transactions are public forever. Yeah, by definition. By I mean, definition, that the, that's the point of the yes. blockchain. But the idea that you know, I don't. No one has to know. Like, I'm allowed to buy things or sell things yep. without everyone knowing about it. That seems like a human right to me. Yeah. Um. Can will that ever be? made good? I mean, why? There are blockchains that operate that way. There are sort of hidden, like, XMR, and there are blockchains specifically built to obfuscate um, ownership and ability to review the transactions. But in, say, 20, I mean, this is an emerging technology, so in 20 years, will it be easy for the average person, i.e. me, to buy something or sell something using this technology as a currency, medium exchange, in, in privately? It's called XMR Bazaar. Yes. Yeah. Today. <laughs> in no. 20 years, you oh, might be able be. to use it. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the, like the core use of it won't be, but it's not private. You're, it's not private now. Cash is your most private. Um, For sure. That's why they hate yeah. it. Um, but cash is going away. Yeah. Unfortunately. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, the blockchain doesn't solve cancer and every problem. <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, it's just a a very good network for some specific sets of purposes. Yeah, I know. I was just... <laughs> Thanks, today. The guy's interviewing is Damn, a little I bit of a... I missed that, dude. Exabar mentioned on Tucker Carlson's show. Wow. Yeah, That's first awesome. of all, he should have said Monero, right? He should have like, said Monero. But to be fair, XMR. you look up XMR, the first thing that shows up is Monero. So Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and then, but well then, but then he's he's not really, you know, pro Monero, right? He's saying, like, in 20 years, it still won't even be usable. Like, what? It's already very usable today for purposes of transacting privately. And you could buy he's stuff. He's not to show Monero or else he'd be On XMR all. Bazaar, peer-to-peer with Monero today, not 20 years from now. Uh, there's many other ways to use Monero. Dark markets are using Monero every day. It's like one of the only use cases for crypto for actual cash purposes. Um, not 20 years from now, people are using it. It's working as digital cash. So, I mean, that guy's got to get with the program or he's intentionally avoiding the program. I mean, it was mentioned briefly, very briefly. It was mentioned. And it was XMR and not something like Zcash. Uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, it's a very big show. And also, I, I do notice this trend of Monero slowly being picked up by large people. Even yes. if it's just mentioned, it's, it exists and it's well known at this point. Monero is well known. So. Agreed, agreed. It's a, it's a win. And I'm sure it's a lot of these people who are in these higher up positions, they. they aren't being paid to promote privacy coins, right? They probably, their money's in Bitcoin. The, the right. e- Their ecosystem, whatever they operate around is supposed to be Bitcoin. Usually it's not even Bitcoin, it's custodial crap, whatever. Uh, but it's nice to see Monero kind of get shoved in there occasionally. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks, well, Tony. Thank you, guys. And uh, again, like and share, subscribe. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. <laughs>